Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Boomi World 2018. Brought to you by Dell Boomi. Good afternoon, welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Boomi World 2018 from Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier and we're welcoming back to theCUBE one of our alumni, Nima Beatty, Head of Technology Ecosystems from Pivotal. Nima, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. So Pivotal, um, part of the Dell Technologies, part of the companies, yeah. you guys IPO'd recently and I did read that of the first half of 2018, eight of the 10 tech IPOs were powered by Boomi. Well, I, I don't know about that specific. Uh, I know the tech IPOs are making a big comeback. We did IPO on the 20th of April, so we've passed our six month anniversary, if you can say. Uh, but it's been a, a distinct privilege to be part of the overall uh, Dell family of businesses. I think what you have in Michael is a leader who, he has a specific vision, uh, but he's left the independent operating units to work on their own, to, to find their path through that journey and to help each other as brethren, as like sisters and brothers. Um, and the fact that you know, Pivotal is here supporting Boomi, that Boomi is within our conference is supporting um, our customers that we're working together really speaks volumes. And I think if you take a look at it, um, we, there's a lot of things happened this week, right? So a couple weeks ago, uh, you know, IBM's yeah. acquiring Red Hat. This morning, VMware is acquiring Heptio. Uh, that's a, a solid signal that the enterprise transformation and adoption of cloud native model is really taking off. So the new middleware uh, is really all about the cloud native polyglot, multi-glot yeah. environment. And what's interesting, I want to get your thoughts on this because first of all, congratulations on the IPO. Some yeah. were saying, Pivotal's never going to go public. It's, and they did, you guys were spectacular, great success. But what's going on now is interesting. The, the, we're hearing here at, at this show, as other shows, is cloud scale and data yeah. are really at the center of this horizontally scalable cloud pro yeah. value proposition. Okay, great, you mentioned Kubernetes and Heptio and VMware. That's all great. The question that is, how do you compete when ecosystems become the most important thing? So, you worked at VMware, you're at Pivotal, Dell yeah. knows ecosystem, Boomi's got an ecosystem. Partners, which is also suppliers and, and, and integrators. Yeah. They integrate, and also developers. This is a key competitive advantage. Yeah. What's your take on so, that? So here? I think you, you touched on the right point. You compete because of your ecosystem, not despite your ecosystem. We, we can't be, uh, completely hegemonic like Microsoft or Cisco or Amazon can afford to be, um, and I don't think customers really want that. Customers actually want choice. They want the best options, but from a variety of sources. And that's why one of the reasons that we not only invest in the Dell ecosystem, but also in, in Pivotal's own ecosystem, is to cultivate the right technologies that'll help our customers on that journey. Uh, and our philosophy is always find the leaders in the quadrant, uh, the Cadillac vendors, the, the Lexus vendors, onboard them, and the most important thing you can do is to ensure a pristine customer experience. We're not measuring whether feature A from one partner is better than feature B from another partner. We really don't care. What we care about is we can hand wire and automate what would have been a very manual process for customers so that, let's say, Boomi with Cloud Foundry works perfectly out of the box. So the customer doesn't have to go through and hire consultants and additional external resources just to figure out how two pieces of software should work together. They just should. So when they make that buying decision, they know that the day after that buying decision, everything can be installed and their developers and their app dev teams and their ops teams can be productive. So that's, that's the power of the ecosystem. You talk about the relationship between Pivotal and Boomi, because Boomi's been born in the cloud as a startup, yeah. acquired eight years ago. You're part of the Dell Technologies family. VMware's VMware, we know about VMware, doing great. You guys are doing great. Now, Boomi's out there. So how do they factor into, and what's the relationship you have with them, uh, and, and how does that work, and how do you guys work together? Perfect question. So I, in my primary role at Pivotal is to manage all of our partner ecosystems, specifically the technology partners. Um, and what I look for are any force multipliers, any essentially ISVs who can help us accomplish more together than we could on our own. Boomi's a classic example of that. Um, what do they enable? So take your classic customer. A uh, classic customer has, let's say, 100 applications um, in inventory that they have built, managed, and, and purchased, uh, procured off commercial off-the-shelf components. Um, and roughly 20, 30% of them are newish, greenfield applications, perfect for the cloud-native transformation. Uh, most 80% 80, 80 of them, or 70%, are going to be older, brownfield applications that will have to be refactored. But there's always going to be that 15% towards the end that's legacy, mainframe. 
it can't be changed. You cannot afford to modernize it, to restructure it, to refactor it. You're going to have to leave it alone, but you need it. Your inventory systems are there, your work These are critical systems. Are Most people think legacy is outdated, but they're actually just valued. No, they're, they're extremely critical. valuable. Yes. They just cannot be modernized. Bingo. So, yeah. A partner like Boomi will allow you to access the full breadth of those resources without having to change them. So I could potentially put Boomi in front of any number of older business applications and effectively modernize them by bridging those older legacy systems with the new systems that I want to build. So let's do an example. Um, I am The Gap and I want to build a new version of our in-store procurement system that runs on my iPhone that I can just point yeah. to a garment and it will automatically put it in my in my, uh, you know, my checkout box. How do I do that? Well, I can build all the intelligence and I can use AI and functions and I can build everything inside of containers, that's great, but I still have to connect to the inventory system. The inventory system. Which is a database, all these systems yeah, are out somewhere there. Somewhere or something. Yeah. And my developers don't know enough about that old legacy database to be able to use it. But if I put a, a RESTful interface using Boomi in front of it, and a business connector that's not older XML or kind of inflexible, whatever, SOA gateways, uh, then I have enabled my developer to actually build something that is uh, real, that is customer focused, that is um, appropriate for that market, yeah. without being hamstrung by my existing legacy infrastructure. And now my legacy infrastructure is not an anchor that's holding me back. Yeah, you mentioned force multiply, Lisa, we talk about this all the time on theCUBE, where that scenario is totally legit and relevant because in the old version of IT, yeah. you'd have to essentially build inventory management into the new app, you'd have to essentially kill the old to bring in the new. I think what containers and cloud native has shown is you can keep the old and sunset it if you want on your own timetable, yeah. or keep it there and make it productive and make the data exposable, but you can bring the cool, relevant new stuff in. Yeah. And I think that is what I see and we see from inter customers like, okay, cool. I don't have to kill the old, I got to take care of it on my own timetable, versus a complete switching cost analysis, take down a production system, exactly. build something new, will it work, you know, you cross your fingers, okay. Again, this is a key IT different, different, different dynamic. It, it is, and it's a realization that there are things you can move and those are immutable. They're simply just yeah. monolithic, they will never move. Um, and you're going to work within that, those confines. Uh, you can have the best of both worlds. You can maintain your, your, your legacy applications, they're still fine, they run most of your business, and still invent the new, and explore new markets, and new industries, and new verticals, and just new capabilities all through and through, without having to touch in your back-end systems. Without having to bring the older vendors in and say, can you please modernize your stuff, yeah. because my business is dependent, and I am going to lose that. I'm going to become the new Sears, I'm going to become the new Woolworth, or whoever, Blockbuster, that has missed an opportunity uh, to vector into a new way of delivering their services. When you're having customer conversations, Neem, I'm curious, talking with enterprise organizations who have tons of data, all, all the yeah. systems, including the legacy, which I'm glad that you brought up that that's not just old systems, there's a lot of yeah. business critical, mission critical uh, applications running on them. Where in, do you start that conversation with a large enterprise who doesn't want to become a blockbuster, to your point, and going, These are, this is the suite of applications we have, where do we start? Yeah. Talk to us about that, that customer journey that you help enable. Well that, that's great, because in most cases, the customers already know exactly what they want. It's not the what that you have to have the conversation on, it's the how do I get there. I know what I want, I know what I want to be, I know what I want to design, and it's how do I transform my business, fundamentally do an app transformation, enterprise transformation, digital transformation, where do I begin? Um, and so, uh, you know, our, our perspective at Pivotal is, you know, we're uh, uh, die-hard adopters of agile methodology. We truly, truly believe that you can be an agile development organization. We truly believe in Mark Andreessen's vision of software eating the world, which let's unpack what that means. It just means that if you're going to survive the next 10 years, you have to fundamentally become a software company, right? So look at all the companies we work with. Are you an insurance company or are you delivering an insurance product through software? Are you a bank or are you delivering a, a banking product through software? Well, when was the last time you talked to a bank teller? Or the ATM, most of your banking is done online, your computer or your mobile device. Even my check cashing, I don't have to talk yeah. to anyone, it's wonderful. Ford Motor Company, do they bend sheet metal and put wheels on it or are they a software company? Well, consider that your modern pickup truck They're an IoT company now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All those sensors on those lines manufacturing of, lines. That's crazy. You have 150 million lines of code in your pickup truck. 
your, soft, your, your, your car, your pickup truck, your whatever is more software than it is anything but else. But also data is key, and I want to get your thoughts on this, this is super important, Michael Dell brought up on the keynote today here at the uh, Boomi World was, okay, the data's got to stay in the car, I don't need to have a latency issue yeah. of, yeah. hey, so, hey, I need a millis nanosecond results. With data, cloud has become a great use case, and with multi-cloud on the horizon, some people are going to throw data in multiple clouds, yeah. and that's a clear use case, and everyone kind of see the benefits of that. How do you guys look at this, because now data needs to be addressable across horizontal systems. You mentioned the gap, and well, gap that's, example. That's great, so uh, you know, the, one of the biggest trends we see in data is really event streaming is the idea that the ability to generate data far out exceeds the ability to consume it. So what if we treated data as just a river? And I'm going to cast my line and only pick up what I want out of that stream. Uh, and this is where Kafka and companies like Solace and any event-driven networks and, and Spring Cloud functions and Spring Cloud data are really coming into play, is the acknowledgement that yes, we are not in a world where we can store all of the data all the time and figure out what to do with it after the fact. We need timely, and timely is within milliseconds, if not seconds, um, action taken on an event or a data event coming through. So why don't we modernize around you know, that type of, of uh, data structure and data event and data horizon. So that's one of the trends we see. The second is that there is no one database to rule them all anymore. I can't get away with having Oracle and that, that's my be all end all. I now have MySQL and SQL and Mongo and Cassandra and Redis and any number of other databases that are form, fit, and function specific for a, a utility and they're perfect for that. I see graph databases, I see key value stores, I see distributed yeah. data warehouses. Uh, so my options as a developer and as a user is really expanding yeah. which means the total types of data components that I can use um, are also expanding exponentially. And that gives me a lot more flexibility on the types of products that I can build yeah. and the services that I can ultimately deliver to customers. And that highlights microservices trend because you have now a multitude of databases, not the one database yeah. rules them all. There'll be literally thousands of databases on sensors, so microservices become the key element to connect all these systems. All of it together. And, and, um, Microservices is really a, a higher level of abstraction, right? So we started with virtual machines, and we went to containers, and we went to functions and microservices. Um, you, it's not an upward trend necessarily as it is an expansion yeah. um, into different ways of being able to do work. So some of my work products are going to be very, very small. They can afford to be ephemeral, but there may be many of them. How do I manage a cluster of millions of these potential workloads? Back it off. I can have ephemeral applications that run inside of containers, or I can have rigid, fixed applications that have to run inside of virtual machines. I'm going to have all of them. What I need is a platform that delivers all of this for me without me having to figure out how to hand wire these bits and pieces from various different either proprietary or open source kits just to make it work. Now I'm going to need a, a 60 to 100 or 200 person team just to maintain this very bespoke thing that I have developed. I'll just pull it off the shelf because this is a solved problem. Right, Pivotal has already solved this problem. Other companies have already solved this problem. Let me start there, and so now I'm here. I don't have to worry about all this leftover plumbing. Now I can actually build on top of my business. The analogy I'd use is you don't bring furniture with you every time you check into a hotel. And we're telling customers, no, no, every time you want to move to a different city just for a business meeting or for a work trip, we're going to build you a house, and you need to furnish it. Well, that's ridiculous. I'm going to check into a hotel, and my expectation is I can check out of any other room, and they'll all be the same, and it really doesn't matter what floor I'm on, what room I'm in, but they'll have the same facilities, the same bed, the same you know, restroom facilities. That's what I want. That's what containers are. And eventually, all the services surrounding that, that hotel room experience will be microservices. And we are the workload, the people. And we are the workload, <laughs> and we're the most important thing. We are the application, you're right. I love that. That's probably the best analogy I've heard of, of containers. Nima, thanks so much for stopping by theCUBE, joining John and me today, and talking to us about what's going on with Pivotal, and how you guys are really helping as part of Dell businesses dramatically transform. It's been my pleasure, thank you thank both. You. Thank you. Thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We are in Las Vegas at Boomi World 18. Stick around, John and I will be right back with our next guest.